The very word addiction comes from the Latin root that means enslaved by or bound to. To help you better understand how this process works, I need to describe in more detail some of the major brain structures associated with the limbic system so that you can understand this better. In the limbic system, I want to introduce you to a, a, a place called the septum, the amygdala, hippocampus, and thalamus. These four parts play an integral role in addiction. The septum contains our pleasure centers, and particularly sexual ones, but it, that's where the highest concentration of dopamine receptor sites are. Even though we have dopamine receptor sites on every cell in our body, it begins in the limbic part of the brain and then floods a cascade of chemicals, which is a, a chemical reaction process that we can feel through our whole body almost instantaneously. So our pleasure centers are located in the limbic system. And remember, the unconscious part of the brain. So we don't control from the rational moral part of the brain whether we're triggered by something that's outside of our control. And so understanding that is critical. Okay, the amygdala, that's the little part of our brain that, that centers on fight or flight responses, the survival part to keep us alive. And, and um, then we have something called the hippocampus, which is mainly involved in memory. This, this, is, this is how our brain works. We see things with our eyes. Immediately it goes to the thalamus, deep in the limbic system, which is the gathering place for all sensory information. So when I say sensory information, that anything that comes from our senses, our five senses, sight, um, sound, taste, touch, smell, all of those things are, are being interpreted in the thalamus uh, on a regular basis, moment by moment. And the thalamus then weeds out those things that are not survival type things. And, uh, and, and so... And, and the amygdala, our fight or flight, this is really interesting. Research has indicated that it can read responses, emotional responses in people's faces in, in milliseconds, meaning fractions of one second. The limbic system is always scanning and responding to certain things outside of our awareness. And uh, so that leads to the question, okay, so how does an addiction even develop? So we understand a little bit more about what these, these four things do, the septum, amygdala, hippocampus, and thalamus. So as we go through life, we have experiences. We come across things. Every one of us have experienced um, different pleasurable things, whether it's taking a, a drug for the first time, a drink, having a sexual experience for the first time, they're meant to be pleasurable. And so in the, the limbic system, the pleasure centers are, are, they go off. And then the hippocampus, which is mainly involved in memory, it memorizes that. It memorizes a certain substance or thing with pleasure. So another thing to emphasize about how the brain develops, the limbic system is the first part of the, the brain to develop. We now believe that the amygdala deep in the limbic system is fully developed by the time we're five years old. This other part of the brain, the higher functioning brain, the neocortex, and more specifically the prefrontal cortex, doesn't fully develop into our mid-20s. And so that's why when addiction gets um, entrenched early in life, and most of those that I've seen throughout the years in the counseling setting, their addiction began 12, 13, 14 years of age, some, some even earlier. And so what happens is, that, so we experience pleasure and then we go out into the world and then we experience stress. We use an acronym, um, BLAST. BLAST stands for being bored, lonely, angry, stressed, tired. And what neuroimaging um, technologies have shown us is that when we get stressed, as, and, and so these neuroimaging processes can take pictures of a person's brain as we're thinking and doing things, when we get too stressed, the rational, logical part of the brain actually begins to quiet down and the limbic system lights up. Because remember the second prime directive, avoid pain. When we're too stressed, bored, lonely, angry, stressed, tired, the limbic system goes, this is not a good state to be in. 
it, the hippocampus, because that's where that major source of memories, it will go on a search for a memory that will take the pain away that's associated with pleasure. And so it will hit on a memory that this will work, this will work, this will work. And then all of a sudden a person has what's called a craving. This is this, this insatiable drive to go do something, right? You've experienced that in your life. When you don't want to feel that way, you don't know why you feel that way, all of a sudden you have this craving to go act out. Now that you understand that this craving comes from the unconscious part of the brain outside of your awareness, you don't need to feel guilty about it. And typically what happens with those who don't understand the whys and how this happens is you'll get frustrated with that and you'll try to resist it. So one case in point, there was an individual who was struggling with a, a sexual addiction and he was driving home one day for work. His wife was out of town and, and uh, he was highly triggered. He was driving home in the car and the trigger hit him and he didn't recognize that what had happened at work really set him off. His boss yelled at him and, you know, and, and just created all sorts of insecurities within him. So he's driving home. His wife's not home. All of a sudden he, he has this powerful craving to go get his drug of choice. And then he says to himself, without understanding, he starts fighting it. He says, no, I'm not gonna do that. No, 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 that's bad, that's wrong. And then what happens is as he's doing that, his limbic system is being threatened because the limbic system, it, it's kind of like the Incredible Hulk, the limbic system's going, well, what are you doing to me? I'm just trying to keep you alive. And so the pressure becomes more intense and this, this battle is going back and forth between the rational part of the brain and then the limbic system. So it's like a war going on. And as I've mentioned before, you cannot overcome an addiction and beat the limbic system by willpower alone. You just aren't strong enough to do that because the limbic system is the survival part of our brain and it always wins in the long run. Went right and acted out and then he felt horrible afterwards because addiction never works in the long run. And so understanding the whys, as he started to process things, as he continued to move forward, he had other experiences where it was very similar to that, but then he learned what to do with the trigger when it happened, and he was able to get through it without acting out. So the limbic system is the type of brain that is functioning in a lion or a tiger. So when a lion or a tiger gets hungry, what does it do? It goes on a hunt in, and in order to survive. And um, it just does what it does. When we understand that our limbic systems are built the same way, then we can start to practice these tools and strategies that I'm gonna be teaching you in order to manage it. Because one of the greatest challenges in dealing with addiction is, is really understanding the language of the limbic system. And once you get that, and once you stop trying to fight it with the verbal part of your brain alone, then you'll start to make significant progress. So oftentimes in the counseling session, I would ask a, a client why they have come. And they will say, I, I'm so frustrated with my addictive behaviors. I'm tired of them. I'm willing to do anything to get better. And I'll pause a moment because I've been doing this a long time. And I'll say, but if you're really still, can you hear another part of you that doesn't really want to get better? And, and then their body language will change. And a, a kind of a little smirk will be on the face, almost like I caught them. And they'll say, yeah, there is, there's another part that doesn't want to change. And, and that's the why of addiction. And so helping them understand or, and helping you understand that you, you literally have two parts of your brain. And there's a part of you that's moral, rational, that cares about getting better, that wants to do the right thing. And then the limbic system is, again, the type of the brain that's largely functioning in a lion or a tiger. It just wants what it wants when it wants it. And, and at the foundation of the limbic system is something called instant gratification. That's what it desires. It doesn't like to wait for things. It wants what it wants now. 
and it doesn't care about long-term consequences of things. That, that's this part of the brain's job. And that's why the five key strategies that I'm gonna be teaching you will strengthen this part of the brain to learn how to speak to this part of the brain, to understand it, and then to manage it. And when you treat the limbic system in the appropriate way, it will respond and then, and then you will be able to live the life that you've been dreaming of, free of addictive behaviors, not free of triggers, not free of temptations. We don't know how to get rid of that. So, so the issue is not the alleviation of challenges and troubles and triggers and temptations, because they're going to continue to happen. But it's what you do with them that is so critical. And to this point, you just simply haven't had the information that can help you do that and manage the limbic system effectively.